Uh, <laughs> wait a second, let me do the announcement. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I know you are really excited about the, this session. We are all very excited about the short talk session. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for staying with us so late. And uh, I also want to thank DCC for preparing such a wonderful meal. It was delicious. So now we will have the uh, uh, lighting talk session, of course, starting with uh, Ashlyn uh, from Mount Sinai. But before we go on, I will just want to tell each speaker, uh, you have, uh, if you can finish your talk within six minutes, uh, you will be allowed for one quick question. If you go over, then uh, uh, there won't be question allowed. And if you go over seven minutes, I think the DCC will cut off your mic. I think so that's what they uh, threatened to do. So the risk is you are, you are, you are, you are on your side, all right? So, <laughs> yeah, so our first speaker is, is again, Ashlyn Dinser uh, from uh, Mount Sinai. She's going to talk about uh, decoding brain epigeno with a broad H3, K4 trimethation. Thanks. Is the mic on? So I, I haven't started my clock, so you're fine. <laughs> or you can use mine. Hello. Okay. So my name is Aslihan Dinsersh. Uh, I just recently finished my PhD in Dr. Sharon McBarian's lab, and right now I'm working as a postdoc in Dr. Eric Schatz's lab. And today my, uh, I will be talking about my research project entitled Neural, Neural Epigenome Mapping in Healthy and Disease Prefrontal Cortex. And this is the outline for my presentation. First, I would like to give a little introduction, then I will go over my hypothesis and specific aims. <laughs> Finally, I will discuss my results. Uh, as you know, in the last 10 years, GIVA studies have found that the genetic architectures of the most human complex diseases have a predominant influence of the common variation. And many of these common disease risk variants are enriched in the regulatory regions of the human genome. And ENCODE, ROADMAP, GTEx, uh, GTEx projects have found that the active regulatory regions and non-coding transcripts are often cell pan uh, tissue specific. And most of these studies were performed using human cancer lines and or normal cells from the non-brain tissues. In my context, I'm working on the human brain. And the brain has several cell types. Many of them are still not understood. And characterizing brain epigenome is a challenging no, uh, not only about the great diversity number of the histone modification, DNA methylation, and chromatin regulatory proteins, but also about brain cellular heterogeneity, which may bias the cell type specific epigenetic patterns influencing the finding in psychiatric epigenetic studies. And therefore, it's really important to construct and map uh, neuronal epigenome from the brain, which will complement existing mapping approaches on blood tissues, ultimately leading to deeper understanding of neurons' identity and functional differences, as well as providing a possible window into brain development and diseases. And the focus of my slides today is the one of the particular histone mark, uh, histone 3K43 methylation, which is a well-established promoter mark. Uh, <coughs> and previously, our lab showed histone 3K43 methylation alteration in the autism postmortem brains, and we observed dynamically regulated 3-methylation uh, peaks during the lifespan in a collaboration with the Xiping Bank. And recent whole exome sequencing studies in 4,000 autism individuals find the mutation in the genes encoding proteins involving the synaptic function and most importantly, uh, chromatin regulation. And unexpectedly, psychiatric genetics consortium showed that the histone lysine methylation is uh, emerging as a, a central pathway in the brain development and function. And as you see in these slides, uh, many of the mutations in the histone 3K43 methylation regulation are linked to those, some of the neurodevelopmental disorders, like such as schizophrenia and intellectual disability. 
And I'm investigating uh, broad histone 3K4 dream methylation domains in prefrontal cortex by performing genome-wide mapping of histone 3K4 dream methylation in neuronal and non-neuronal nuclei from the control and disease post-mortem brain. Our hypothesis is the epigenetic dice regulation at non-coding uh, non cis regulatory regions may play key role in cell identity in health and disease states. And the technique used for the cell type specificity, we use the FEC um, fluorescence activated cell sorting on fresh frozen post-mortem tissue, and we dissect for the prefrontal cortex and use the neon antibody. And then this sorted neuronal nuclei was subject to the micrococcal nucleus digestion, and then to get the micronucleosomal DNA and the chip sickly histone 3K4 3 methylation. And I investigated my hypothesis in three specific aims. In the first specific aim, uh, we identified the top 5% broadest peaks of the cortical neurons that were longer than the 95% of the all histone 3K4 methylation. And the second specific aim, we validate the, these neuron specific broadest domains computationally using the glial and blood cell types. And then we compare using the same pipeline and the same uh, chip stick experiments on the chimpanzee, rhesus macaque, and the mouse. I couldn't, I forgot to put the mouse brain. So, and then we integrated with the other uh, uh, RNA-seq gene expression profiles from the especially uh, white matter and gray matter of the prefrontal cortex. So, and this is, here's my pipeline developed for the chip seq rna -seq, and integrated with the Voyager network. But unfortunately, I don't have time to go to specifically. I will discuss my results. Uh, this is the first quality uh, control and validation of the chip seq experiments. We compiled the histone 3K4 epigenetic landscape patterns for the RefSec annotated genes across all samples and computed the pairwise spearman correlations, and as you see here across these different cell types, the intra-cell type correlation was systematically higher than the inter-cell type correlation, and each cell type clustering together in an unsupervised fashion. And here, today I will just show the, our neuron specific, which not show up in the non-neuronal cell types in the human brain and the blood cell types. As you see, all of them, mostly they are associated with the promoter transcription star site, but you can see the green uh, intergenic regions. So we can use the disbrotus histone 3K4 methylation peaks as a uh, mammy integrated with the rna -seq data. This might be the novel transcripts. Uh, so uh, this can be also used as a, this, uh, as a uh, important signatures to identify the novel transcripts. And here in the B, I'm showing that the, the uh, neuronal cell type, non-neuronal, and blood. As you see, the signature is mostly energy in the neuronal cell type, not show up in the blood. And the C, we are showing that most of the genes are really prominent role in this neuropsychiatric diseases. And this is summary of the, uh, when I say broadest peaks, as you see, is one of the genes. This is the first track, is the uh, rna -seq data from the brain, but we uh, uh, dissociated for the uh, gray matter and white matter. And the orange trick is the gray matter, which usually enrich with the neurons. And the white matter is mostly contained the astrocyte glials. And this uh, showing that the correlation with the broadest purple neuron specific broadest peaks and has higher expression in the gray matter. And they are mostly enriched in the synaptic transmission uh, gene categories. And the four orange, another example is the glial saxtan. So per, uh, pink uh, broadest domains associated with the saxtan, and they are mostly uh, ex expressed in the white matter, and uh, they enrich for the myelination and axon enrichment. And this is another example for showing that the, uh, this might be used as a biomarker because they were enriched in the all three cell types. And then we compare the, uh, we look all broadest, uh, 500 broadest, is okay. So, so the here uh, we check for the neuronal broadest peaks and looking for the gray cortical matter. And then we also did for the uh, same analysis for the white matter. 
here, uh, the next question we were asking is, this is broadest domains are really important for the brain development. We should observe these different, uh, these broadest domains in the other, uh, across species, like a chimpanzee, rhesus macaque, and mouse. And we did the same, uh, applied the same pipeline, and we identified 131 regions, the concerts, and they are mostly uh, associated with dopamine signaling. And the lately, uh, we constructed Bayesian network, and we want to see that the uh, investigated the topological organization of the broadest domains, and uh, we see that the 165, uh, 161 genes was mostly enriched and uh, performed cortex neuron, and can reach other genes in the network more efficiently. And this is conclusion. So we can use these broadest domains as a important signatures for the brain development and therapeutic in maybe in the future for the therapeutic applications. Cool. Thanks. Uh, so our next speaker is uh, Stephen Floor from UC Berkeley. Uh, he's going to talk about the role of transcript-specific translation in human uh, neuronal differentiation. <laughs> 